All right, 904, got about 26 minutes left. Uh, you can see pre-market, it got down to about 423.8 or something. Coming back up a little more. Uh, we're gonna get a new weekly range. Where's that new weekly range gonna be? So you don't wanna, when you, the more you work with this indicator, the more you will literally be able to look at it, see where those low time frame trends were, see where all the volatility was to the downside or to the top side, and you'll be able to place that new weekly range. You get pretty good at it. You know, a lot of people are going to be down in here, right? No, look at this move. Look at this move on Friday. I bet this weekly range, I bet the top, I bet the top's up around 425. It's probably going to be a bigger range. <laughs> Let me see here real quick. Yeah, it's definitely going to be. Because we, we start out, right? We started out the week and uh, SPY dumped down. Right? Dumped down to the bottom of the weekly range. And then, wow, when, or, uh, yeah, Wednesday. Just gap. That that was that big gap up. That was the stream we were having. P-Funk was on. And ever since then, to the top. So we're definitely going to have a bigger, bigger weekly range. I can see the top, like I said, be around 425. The bottom, I mean, hell, the bottom could be down here around 423, 422.50. Probably going to be pretty big. But that's pre-market. Here we are, right, coming down. Already going to be testing it, which is good. That's what you want to see. That's what you want to see. Early test so you can get, uh, you know, get rid of any, any anxiety there might be where, hey, that range didn't get tested. That's what I, I actually I love about these traditional markets with these pre markets, especially Monday morning, because uh, you want to see where that pre mark where, where that price is going to open up in pre market. Did you move through those volatility ranges where they already tested? Because that's always great when you're heading in one direction. Doesn't matter, bear, bull, whatever. You see those week, weekly, a, a new monthly, a new weekly. The new dailies, when you see when you see that pre-market price action gap through there, I, I that's something I love to see. It kind of sets the tone, and especially on Mondays, especially on Mondays, which this was great right here, right? This was great right here um, because, and I even talked about it, where price action was above the weekly range, and it, it gapped to the top side and rejected at the R1, then came back and gave a full test of the weekly. All right and the daily and we all know you can look at wicks you can look at candle closes on these volatility ranges it's straight ridiculous that's why we use them that's why we use them very powerful i love it love my little indicators okay let's pop over actually what time is it yeah and go over to btc real quick let's check out this new weekly range where we're waiting for the market to open yeah here we go so, of course, what does BTC do yesterday? I was watching these charts hard and heavy last night, too. We pump right off the top of the week, weekly, right? We open up the new day, come down, test the top of the new weekly range, and then pump like a thousand bucks. Pretty sure it was. Yeah, pump about a thousand dollars. And then overnight, sell off, right? Boop, 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 boop. Right back, testing the weekly range. Which, which makes sense. And you see something, when you see a pullback like that, and then you wake up this morning, spies gapping down. So without even, without even looking at that spy chart, I could have I looked at BTC first and said, guarantee you spies gapping down this morning. Just because of the way BTC is moving. And they're highly correlated. This is the thing that people don't get out there in uh, trading lanes, especially retail traders. I'm going to go out on I'm going to go out on a limb here and say not only retail traders, you got the whole damn crew over at Tasty Trade who trade options. They don't understand it, which kind of blows my mind. It's uh, I, I would think if you're trading options, you'd really want to know about correlation, especially when we're talking about volatility. That's what they base all their trades on, right? Implied volatility, though. Right, you get when implied volatility is high, they're looking to sell premium. When it's low, they're looking to buy premium. It, it's this, it's it's the age old thing where, hey man, yeah, wouldn't it be nice to know uh, exactly how that volatility is correlated to the price action, right? And then be able to work down through time frames, get a workflow, get good entries on your options positions. 
Because that's what happens with a lot of people in options. You get in really bad positions. You get really bad entries. So, yeah. Just got to work on that. Me included. I'm not, uh, <laughs> I'm not excluded from that. Options is not easy by any means. But having these indicators, having the reverse mean of log returns, and the projection boss, I mean, are you kidding me right now? With trading options, do people really understand what, what, what these Coda wolves have, uh, wolves have put together? For crying out loud. When you're literally, so say new, uh, new options, right? We get new options. They start out. You run your projection. Now me, I love strangles and straddles. I just love them. You can't go wrong. Sometimes they might turn in, in, into uh, some uh, little more complicated st strategy, right? But strangles and strategy, or strangles and, stra strangles and straddles are something I really like to put on. Now, do I just wake up one morning and say, hey, I'm going to put on a strangle? No. I wake up in the morning, I look at all my indicators, and I'll be like, Am I buying or am I selling premium? And as what usually ends up happening is that trade will end up turning into a strangle or a straddle, especially if it doesn't if it doesn't move in the right direction for me, right? Because it's not like I'm just going to get out because we know how volatile these markets are, and I've already made a decision based on like 45 to 60 days out. So I'm going to be I'm going to be looking for a lot of that volatility and so it, it say i say i uh say i buy a put right say i buy a put and the fucking thing turns around starts pumping well i'm gonna buy a call right i'm not gonna get out of the put because hell it could turn around and go down again that's what's great about strangles and straddles especially when you're buying premium right you're only gonna lose the premium so you got to think of it that way <clears throat> which is good. Totally different when you're selling premium. Be careful. Don't be that guy that's jumping out of a 30-story uh, window of a building <laughs> because you get a margin call for a couple million dollars because you don't understand options. And these bucket shops literally let these traders sell premium. It's like, oh boy, <laughs> here we go. You'll end up divorced. Living under a bridge with your with your ledger, if you're not careful. <laughs> Selling premium is dangerous. Real dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Especially if you do not know how to leg up on that position, for God's sakes. Don't do anything stupid. I mean, if you're selling premium and that thing starts turning against you, turn that thing into a, str into a strangle or a straddle real fast. That, that, that's usually my first go-to. No matter if I'm buying or selling premium, if that thing turns against me, I'm not just getting out of the position because we know how volatile these markets are. I'm going to add a leg. I'm going to turn it into a strangle. And then, boom. Now, it, it, it gets really tricky, though. You got to understand because that could turn into a butterfly or a condor or you, you need to study on how to is what ends up happening is that you're going to cap your risk and your profit, right? Your profit and your loss is going to be capped. And usually when you do moves like that, um, the profit's not going to be as good. That's why they're great trades. You're, 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 you, you really need to know what you're doing is where I'm getting at. And that's a trial and error thing. That's a trial and error thing. And for me, the best thing to do is to start with buying or selling. And if that position turns against you, turn it into a strangle. Protect yourself. Right? Protect yourself. Indeed. But like I said again, I would highly suggest starting out buying premium. Right? Buying premium. People are like, yeah, but I want to short it. Look, you need to understand options. You can buy a put. You can buy premium. You can buy a put. Right? <laughs> the, uh, to, for the market to move down. That's not... Uh, just that's not what buying and selling premium is all about. You can buy it either way, and that's the safest. And if you're just learning options, but what started this whole conversation was th these tools are incredible. You've got daily distribution ranges, you got the reverse mean of log returns, and you've got a projection boss that is literally projecting the distribution into the future out. 
spe- in in to to it just gives you if you're going with the 954 Laplace distribution range you're going to have a really fun time trading options right this is what people that are just blindly trading options they have no idea into the future right there's so many people especially young traders that are going on to you know like robin hood and stuff and trading these options they have no fucking idea what they're doing they're just buying calls buying puts i'm pretty sure i mean hopefully some of these exchanges i haven't used robin hood uh have some sort of a like uh wall up that does not let new traders sell premium because you're going to get people in a lot of trouble because they don't understand, right? Your your risk is in, I mean, there's no cap on it, right? No cap at all. You could lose a fortune real fast. But this is what we talked about last week. Now we're going to move on. Look at the new weekly candle. What's happened? After uh, literally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about over over two months. About nine weeks, almost 10 weeks of price action. The returns have mean reverted, right? BTC's price action is above the reverse mean of log returns. It's at 23,786, right? So we did, and I talked about that. If we closed up here above the 95.4, close up by the 1SD, that this new weekly candle is going to open up in this little trough on the weekly, and it sure did. So here we are. And now we get to see what's going to happen is what I really like is what I really like is that this reverse mean is right down here at the, you know what? Hold on real quick. I forgot we had a new week. Back this baby up one. Doop. There she blows. Let me save it. Okay. So you got the 95.4 on the distribution right below it. So if this thing wants to dump out, right? Get a little pullback. Maybe a little candle refill here. We do have this uh, support level. This 95.4%. And this is the issue I'm having. Why I haven't started a new projection. Look at this Look at this choppiness. Man, I don't feel comfortable throwing a projection anywhere right here. Look at all the wick. Look at all the wicks. Right? And you've got these. You've got one, two. You've got a bearish candle. You've got these three bearish candles in here. There is no good place to start a distribution. Right? Now, we're on a weekly. You drop this down to a daily. You're definitely going to find some action. Let's see here. Pull this up. I mean, there was, but it was a while ago, right? I mean, if anywhere, I'd start it right here. Let me back this up. But I was wrong. There really isn't. I mean, even on the daily. Look at this. I mean, you'd start a down move, right? But I do like this. We did get outside the 95.4 here, right? Pulled back. We got the reverse mean though, All right? Look where the daily is right now. All right? Look at this daily candle, All right? We ran up to the top side up there at 25.2, which was where? Daily 1SD. Let's go back over here. Boom, there it is right here. Blue cross line. Daily first standard deviation. That's that little blue dot right there. Almost got to the... Uh, 95.4 Laplace. So I'll tell you what, there's a big gap between these on the daily. Hmm. Yeah, I would imagine it's going to stay. We This could go sideways today. We need to see what traditional markets are going to do. But you can see this price action on the lows of the day bounce from the top of this uh, reverse mean. Is what you want to see in these situations? Let's just ride this baby, right? And if not, if we're going to break through this mean on the daily again, Right, we're immediately, but we're, we're far away again. Right, returns are going to mean revert at some point. Compared to the weekly, though, I love the way this reverse mean looks. It's really come along. Depend, you know, look down here. Right on the daily, what did it get down to? Yeah, like fourteen. Weekly, God, it was down to five k or something. Ridiculous, and that doesn't mean price action has to go down there. But that's where the reverse mean of the log returns is at. Is what you don't want to see is it just ride that baby down because then the market's in trouble. The, these markets are pretty damn resilient, right? Especially you got everybody, especially retail traders, just listening to the news, basing their trades on news. Whoa, oh, the markets are screwed. The economy's fucked. Yeah, and <laughs> and I mean it's just like so. We don't care about any of that. The volatility. 
is, is going to tell us. The entropy is going to tell us. All our indicators, right, that are based on returns, they're going to let us know what's going to going to be happening with price action. Why? That's like this whole thing. Every it's just one massive prediction model, in my opinion, because a lot of these indicators are based on the returns. Price action follows the returns. And this is where the divergence between those two comes in, right? Because when you get divergence between things that matter, not I, I don't want to see divergence between price action in the relative strength of, of, of the index, right? Uh, well, what good is that? Does that make any sense once you start using the returns oscillator? What good is that? And, and, and it pretty much the proof is in the pudding. People get wrecked using that type of divergence. That divergence is not to be traded. And if you are going to trade it, it is tricky. I've done it before, but I ran three RSIs, right? Three different lengths. I had a formula. I got it to work, but you, you shouldn't have to tinker with shit to make it work. You don't see me have three, R, three uh, returns oscillators. No, I only need one. All right, I only need one length. As low as possible, in my opinion. I run mine on a seven. <laughs> the only indicator that I'll run something like that that doesn't go along with you know, my number philosophy. So for whatever reason, I like the number seven on the uh, return oscillator. And that divergence is important. It's literally telling you <laughs> the return on your investment is diminishing. Period. The end. It really helps a lot when we're when we're on these when we're trying to trade all this, right? These low time frames when we're trying to ride out that profit. We got we have the tools. It's amazing. Entropy entropy and volatility incredible. You throw you throw in the variance. The uh, Z score, the returns oscillator, you got the fissure for extended trends, right? When all those fissures, all those different lengths line up, and, and you got div, there's so many things to point out when, when you should be taking profit. But most of the alpha traders, right? When I get into a position, when I get into a position, the first chart I'm looking at is here. I want to I want to see these volatility ranges. I want to see the distribution levels because I'm going to take my profit quick, right? So like right now, if if Bitcoin is to bust out to the top side of this weekly range right here, 24165, where the hell would I where would be a great great area to take profit? From the bottom of the bottom of the daily. We're talking about Little profit takings, right? Hundred dollar scalps. If you're down here on the five minute or whatever, three minute chart trading, there's so many opportunities. That's what people people don't understand, right? They they is is how I look at the way I trade. I'm grabbing all the crumbs, right? I'm grabbing all the crumbs. You can become a fucking billionaire cleaning up the crumbs in these markets. By trading these low time frame scalps are so available, it's incredible. One after another. Bing, 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 bing. They are just all over the place. And like I said before, if you're do, it, it, if you're setting setting uh, time to trade during the week, say it's four days a week, six hours a day, all right? So you got 24 hours, 24 hours a week to trade. I am going to try to get in every damn scalp that's possible. I'm going to clean those crumbs up. And if I can get 10 to 15 trades a day and say they're $100 scalps and I'm say I'm trading with a couple bitcoin. So that's 200 200 200 dollar USD profit on each trade. Add it up. Do the math. It's not massive amounts of money, but this is what people don't realize. What happens what happens when you're scalping with 10 bitcoins? Right? That's a thousand dollars a scalp. Bing, 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 bing. It's it's not hard to do, right? The stakes raise obviously. The anxiety level probably going to raise a little bit. Even more important to get out of your trades if they go against you. That's all you got to do. That's what people don't understand. Like, well, how do you get that high of a P and L? I take my profit. And I immediately exit bad trades. I don't fucking even give it a chance. If 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 
If that five minute candle closes below my entry, I don't care what the hell I'm seeing on the charts. I'm going to get out of the trade because how many times has that bit people in the ass when you don't do that? You're like, oh no, it's just a quick little pullback. And then you're a thousand dollars underwater. What the fuck am I doing? Why didn't I just get out of the trade? It, it's, it's hard. It's hard to take profit. It's hard to get out of bad trades. Why? Who knows? Humans are some of the most fucked up creatures <laughs> in the universe. You, you can't explain, can't explain the, uh, <laughs> the psychology of a human being. But it's like we want to hold on to these things so tightly. When you're playing a game, you're making, you're trying to make money. So why the hell wouldn't you get out of bad trades? And why wouldn't you take your profit? Yeah. It's a psychosis. But that's what we're here for. To just beat it in people's brains. Do you understand how many good trades you've probably been in and lost them because you just didn't take the profit? How many have I had? How many has Yasha had? How many has MJ had? None of us, none of us are apart from that. I mean, I've done it, and it is a miserable ass feeling when you're in a winning trade and you just watch the profit disappear for no damn reason at all because you just didn't get the hell out of it. If you're in a long, you just couldn't hit the sell button, you, right? You couldn't get out of the position. That needs to change for people, and when that changes for people, that's the first thing. You got to learn how to take profit and recognize when you're in a bad trade. Just get the hell out take your profit. Everything else is going to come. We got the indicators, right? But if you don't have that base first, I don't care what you're using to trade. Especially in a super volatile market, you can have somebody in the future giving you signals, right? It doesn't matter if you're not taking your profit. <laughs> because we all know in Bitcoin, the future on Bitcoin is like 30 seconds. <laughs> then you're screwed after that. You better get a new read. Things change fast. Got to take that juicy profit. And we got plenty of tools to recognize where those areas are at. Or you can keep it real simple, right? Because when BTC has a nice little move on the five minute, you kidding me? You can get a $100 profit real fast. It, in a 30 second candle, it can move 100 bucks. This is what people don't understand, but they, you get greedy. You want more. Why? Just take that quick profit. If the chart is still attractive, get back in the trade. It's simple. It's so simple. But at the same time, so hard. So hard. It destroys a lot of traders. They never even give themselves a chance. They end up broke because they never took their profit. I mean, who doesn't want to, I mean, it's like, who doesn't want to jump in a Lambo all sexy and ride around town for two weeks and be in a fucking position and, okay, now I'll close it out. I was up 4,000%. This is awesome. <laughs> but that's just, I'm telling you, that's, that kind of, that's the kind of crap that's going to bite me in the ass. Can it be done? Sure. Sure. But after that period of time, Look at all the ebb and flow in that price action you just missed out on. Look at all the counter trend scalps you missed out on. Do the math and see how much profit you missed out on. That's what's incredible. That's what people don't understand. They want to sit in these long positions. My God, you're throwing away a ton of profit by just watching that position go up and down, up and down, up and down. No good. No good, Charlie. Just take the damn profit. Trade the low time frames. I know a lot of people don't because YouTube Jimmy's out there saying don't trade low time frame crypto. It's dangerous. Oh, it's not. way too volatile. When people when they, when you hear them say that, I just immediately laugh because that's what we want. <laughs> right? We want volatility. And most people out there that are supposedly attempting to teach people how to trade, tell people to stay away from it.
bad time to trade. You don't want to trade when the market's highly volatile. You could lose your ass. Not telling people, hey, volatility's great. It's the exact time you should be trading and you should be taking profit, taking profit often and getting as many small positions as possible on the way. It's insane. Monday morning rant. All right. What time is it? Oh, yeah. Get the fuck over here. All right, so SPY. Talked about it. Oh, I pulled up a little more. Pulled up a little more. So, yeah, I'm telling you, the top of this weekly range is going to be really close to where this where this pre-market price action's at. Let's see it populate. Ding, ding. Let's go. Let's freaking go. And to be honest, so we're down here, and that's probably going to be, I tell you what, man, this might be down close to 1SD on the daily. Definitely past the 68.3, I would imagine. Although, where's the new daily range? Do, 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 do. You know what? This week might be a little deeper. We could get this weekly down here. This is going to be interesting. Uh, no, I was right. I was dead right. There's the top. 424.32. Middle of the weekly is down here at 421. There's the bottom. There's the bottom. And like I just said, it's outside the 68.3. In between the 68.3 Laplace and the first standard deviation normal distribution on the new daily candle for SPY. So fantastic. So, and this is what people are going to do. People are going to be like, how the fuck did he know where the new weekly range was going to be at out of this gobbled damn mess? All this price action last week. I'm, hey, I don't know. I've been staring at this chart for about three years now, right? I can look at a week's, of pri a week's amount of price action, look at where the volatility was, to the top side, to the downside, wherever it was, how price action was reacting, how... How, how how big or how small the daily ranges were, right? All the spies were tied all week, damn near, right? So that, there you go. So I take all that into account. Literally, before that new weekly even popped, I said that that's where the top of the damn weekly was going to be, right around 424. I was pretty damn close. So, and that's just, boom, just looking at it because I've looked at it so much. It's not like it's magic. You just stare at something long enough, right? It's like a it's it's like a sweet old couple that can finish each other's sentences. They've been together so long. Have managed to make it <clears throat> not get divorced like uh, four out of five. <laughs> Praise be to everybody that's able to uh, conquer that, <laughs> keep together a relationship for a long period of time in this crazy world. But yeah, that's how I look at these markets. It's a relationship. That's how I look at my indicators. It's a relationship. I want to know what these things are thinking. I want, I, I want to be able to work together to complete the mission. All right? Because I know these charts are tired. I got them up constantly. I'm like, hey, you think maybe you could go on vacation for a couple of weeks and just put us to rest? <laughs> <laughs> But good. So SPY is already down here by the top of the weekly. But what did BTC do? All right. What did BTC do? It rocketed away from its weekly, right? Sent a wick down to the top and then came back and got a nice deep test into it. This is going to be interesting. I want to see what BTC does here at the top of the weekly range. I'm telling you right now, BTC rejects right here to go lower. You'll, you'll see SPY coming. You'll see SPY go down into the need of... Uh, 
into the meat of their weekly range. Freaking dogs going crazy. Let's see here. Let's see what else. Yeah, I knew Solana was going to pull back. Solana and Cardano were probably going to have the biggest hits. Except that shitty old Dogecoin. God, meme coin USA. Um, so, yeah, that makes sense. Let me see something. What's oil? Oh, shit. Well, drop them prices then, you fucker. Paying five twenty a gallon for diesel. I'm ready to go get somebody. <clears throat> yeah, oil took a dump this morning, man. Hmm, VIX rising a little bit. Dixie went back up a little. I bet this thing's flat today. I just have the strangest feeling. This thing's going to be flat. I could see tech stocks maybe pump a little bit because they had a rough one. But I could see I could see everything go a little sideways today. Let's look at this volatility in the daily. Contracting still. Let's see. What about SPY? Spanning. Hmm. Any div? Yeah, there's no div. Was there on BTC on the daily? I don't think there was. That's why people are like, why is that? Why does he always go to that div? Boy, that div's silly. Uh -huh. You keep thinking that. You keep thinking that div's silly, and you keep being on the other side of, the, of these trades. <laughs> That's fine with me, my man. Fine with me. I got no squabbles with you. There is some bear div on the daily. This thing's just messing around. Boy's really trying hard to stay above that zero mean, but it definitely dropped below. But this is kind of what you want to see. There is no correlation. This baby is just like, hmm, we're going to let them figure it out because it is flashing. There is no correlation right now. So you're wanting to see something. All these fissures are turned down. The Z score was up here for a while couple rejections off these confidence intervals. The variance has been pretty flat over the last about week and a half. Let me see. Mm, yeah. I mean, and you, you, the, when the DLP over a long time series here, I mean, a lot of bear div. A lot of bear div. And you're seeing it. You're seeing it all on all the indicators. Return oscillator, Z-score. It's all over the place. So it would not surprise me at all to see this thing pull back a little bit. But, you, yeah, that's why. That's why you do you use your workflow. So I'm seeing that on the uh, daily. What am I seeing on the four hour? I'm seeing that we just have, an, we got an outlier on the Z-score down into these confidence intervals. And uh, we have got, I mean, yeah, there's a little bear div. little bear div. Not as much as there was on the daily. DLP finally, yeah, and that's where a lot of it was. That's what's great about the, D the DLP. All right, you can see from this point right here, it's all been lower highs. All right, all higher highs. Every one of these data, excuse me, data set points. The volatility is literally on the four hour, pretty expanded. I mean, we're at a 96. It was at 100, though. Was at a hundred. Hmm. Let's check this ninety minute out. Oh yeah. First thing I see is no divergence. Um. Uh, oh. A little bit of bold div on the Z score. This volatility pretty much dropped off a freaking cliff too. Grade dumped out. Hmm. That's what I'd love to turn these options traders onto. I mean, this AVR is so powerful. You throw that grade in and everything. It's like you you use implied volatility, right? And they're like, yeah. yeah. Well, here, check this out. Look how powerful using implied volatility, historical volatility, and volatility percentile together is. Very powerful for you. Oh, that's not enough. Well, hey, maybe you should check out the projection boss and the reverse mean of log returns, and our current candle deviation levels, and all the other great tools for options traders that were that were hiding away in the alpha trading Discord. <laughs>
All right. Yeah. I mean, you can see we got a wick up to the top of that and it's kind of rejecting down. I just, everything I'm seeing, you know what? Let me throw this on a weekly. Let's see what's changed up here. Predictor sure hasn't. I mean, in, in this predictor on the weekly, heading back into randomness since, since the trend, right? From uh, that 48K high down to the, when we swept the lows at 17.5, right? I mean, just look at the weekly predictor. All right, let's flip it up. Crazy. Crazy how good it is. Now we're starting to get a little expansion in volatility. The 981's crashed too. 981 is crashed. Well, it's at a... Pull this back up. Yeah, it's at a 3.7. The 525's at 8.0. The 2400's at a 25.75. And... When you see low volatility like this, this is what I talk about all the time. Look, all this move, right? This move up, contracting volatility, negatively correlated. That will, you, I say usually, will ebb and flow into expansion, heading into positive correlation. We'll see what happens with this. That's on a macro level. That's on a macro level. All right. Hmm. Throw this on spy. Let's look at the weekly spy here. Predictor still strong. I mean, the, this whole up move on spy, right? It was going back into randomness last two weeks. It's just starting to drop in the trend. Predictor hasn't flipped at all. And there's no divergence. There's none, right? You got a, got a higher high from this point, right? No div there. So we go back to this point. Good. Good, good. No divs. Why, why do you go back an extra point like that? For long, long, uh, long-term stuff, just to see, okay. just to see if there's anything building. Okay, so you can you like stretch it out, make it make it a little bit longer to see. All right, I got it. I got it. Yeah, and sometimes if I see something that that's kind of putting a thorn in my side. Just, just something out of the ordinary. I'm like, well, yeah, that div's there. I am going to take that returns oscillator. And say I'm looking back. Let's see. So if I'm going back to that point right there. So we're talking, that would be 21 bars. I've got my return oscillator set on a 7. So I'm going to go to the returns oscillator and I'm going to set the length to a 21. And see if the div is still there. That's, yeah. al that's always good to do too. Because... When you're looking for divergence and you see a point of divergence that, that's sticking out to you, the first thing you want to do is change the length on your returns oscillator to exactly the length you're going back and seeing that div on the candles. Then it's going to give you a true read whether that div is there or not. That has changed my bias many times. Many times. I'm trying to learn this one a little bit more, that return oscillator. Yeah, yeah. Dude. Yeah, it's uh, once you get the hang of it, it's easy. And that's all. It's just an oscillator. It's just literally telling you what the returns are doing. And then with the correlation, too, which yeah. the correlation right now, I mean, look, the returns oscillator turned down on SPY three weeks ago, and it's been doing nothing but going up. Look at the correlation. You got two red candles telling you that the correlation between this return, the returns going down and price action isn't there. Telling you price action is probably going to do the exact opposite. And that's exactly what's happened. But when you get a nice a nice uh, move on the returns oscillator and you do get a nice positively correlated, you start getting those positively correlated candles, those are the moves you can trust. It works. Now, we're looking at a weekly. We all know. I don't care what indicators you're using. When you're on a weekly, shit moves slow. Right? <laughs> shit moves real slow. That's why I... A uh, 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 new week, I start on the weekly. Before you know it, I'm moving through the daily, the 12, the 4, the 90, the 45, the 15. Then I'm partying on the five-minute time frames. It's like the macro doesn't really mean that much when you're trading the five-minute time frames. But overall, right? Because if I'm seeing a bias on the weekly, and I'm seeing a bias on the daily in the four-hour, and they're all matching up, do you think on the five-minute I have got all my risk on? Oh, yeah. All of it. All of it. No leverage. Don't need leverage. That's what I tell people. But like this one guy, he's like, well, I need to make money. I'm like, how much money did, did you have in your account? 
thousand dollars. How much leverage were you using? Well, I was like 50x. And this is a guy that lost half of his account in barely a tiny little volatile move. Loses half his account. I was like, well, obviously we're using leverage. Good thing you got out of the trade. You would have got liquidated or whatever. But he's like, well, how do you make money without using leverage? This is where we're at. This is what we're up against. <laughs> it's sickening. It's like you, my friend, have been misled. You do not need to use leverage to make money. You learn how to trade these low time frames. You can take that thousand dollars, run it on yourself. See how long it takes you to build that thousand dollars up to a Bitcoin using no leverage, using these models, trading the low time frames. You will shock yourself how fast you can do it if you're consistent. If the the biggest thing you need to do to continue building an account is get out of bad trades. Don't give it back. I'm telling you right now, the volatility in Bitcoin, it will rape you. It will take every bit of profit back from you you've ever made if, if you let it. And that, that goes with any market. We all know they're vicious. They're vicious. That's why a lot of people, after years, what do they do? They, they've moved options, right? It's not as stressful. Things move a little slower, depending on what type of options you're trading. If you're doing daily options or something, it's <laughs> parties on. But yeah, it's good stuff. We are happy. We indeed are happy. Now let's go over here, see what's happening. Yeah, but we definitely, we want to see BTC, <clears throat> BTC get back up above this weekly range. I'm telling you right now, I think SPY is going to have to get a, get a better test. I mean, it came down, it didn't even get to the top of the weekly. I mean, I just have a feel. I could see this today get down around 421.5. I could see this thing dump a little bit. Just to test the meat of this weekly range down in here and see how, because this is what it does. The buyers and the sellers. It's it's simple as shit. There's buyers and sellers. So what is, what, what's happening in this market? They're t it, it's a continuous test. Right? It's a continuous test. Do these bulls mean business? We're about to find out. Here, I'm going to hammer the red button. Let's see how they react. And it's just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. All these massive algos, right? Just moving these markets around. <laughs> like Yasha was talking about, like on Friday, the amount of money. That's the thing. People, people come into crypto and there's like, you meet some random Jimmy and he's created a, bot, a trading bot. Run. Run for your life. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't use it. Because you're gonna get wrecked. Cause uh real a good a real good trading bot costs a lot of money. A lot of money to develop. Not not small. We're not talking six figures, right? I mean it's a lot of money. Just the development. It's like so. If you're hired on by some massive firm to create this tr this trading algorithm, right? It, it takes a long time. That thing is going to be tried and tested, just over, just beaten, beaten up, to make sure that it's going to be something that this big firm can rely on, right? So it's going to cost a lot of money. And then you've got these people building their own bots and think that they're going to do, they're going to have any impact in these markets at all. These, these big bots are built to trick the little bots into bad positions. It happens all the time, right? Like we'll use Frosty Bot as an example. This dude just shilling the shit out of it. People use it. Everybody's getting wrecked. Of course they are. Of course they are. Unless you've got a million dollars to spend on the development of a trading algorithm, be your own bot. <laughs> Trade to one minute to five minute. Recognize what's going, into, in, going on in these markets with the indicators we put together that are explaining to you what's going on with the returns, where price action is in the distribution of the returns. It gets a lot easier, right? and just take your profit. So what are you literally doing? We're using these tools to recognize what these big algos are thinking. We're jumping on their fucking coattails and we're picking up the crumbs. That's all we're doing. There's billions of dollars in these crumbs to be grabbed. 
And it seems like nobody wants to grab them. They all want to try to swing trade volatility. It's it, it's just like mind blowing. But we've all been there. We've all been there. But you, you, you do this for long enough and you start to just see the light and you're like, oh boy. How, how, how much missed profit over the years, right, has there really been? Tons. Tons. Not, a lo- not, not alone with all the reckless spending. Holy shit. <laughs> when you're not married and you don't have kids, millions of dollars just slip through your hands over the years. But hey, you had fun. Okay, let's see here. But yeah, it's just overall, it's ridiculous. And like I said, again, you ever see anybody talking about they're building a bot, just run. You see somebody selling a trading bot, run, right? (laughs) Because you're going to get taken advantage of big time. It It costs a lot of money and it takes a lot of time to build something like that. Really does. Because you are going to get, I mean, these big firms, imagine how much money they're trading with and how the high frequency of their trades. This bot has got to be a a superstar, man. A superstar. And so when you can recognize what's going on with these massive algorithms and how they're moving these markets, if you can recognize those signatures in these charts, that's all you're doing is jumping on the coattails of these big mechanical beasts. Or like we've always talked about before, when you're down here trading the five minute, it is a literal shark tank. Five minute and below, you are swimming with the big dogs. You're in there, they're big, mechanical, great white sharks. And then here we are, the alpha traders. We jump in that shark tank, we're flesh and blood, great white sharks, swimming with them. They look at you and they're like, oh fuck, we got, he fit, somebody figured it out. And you're just swimming with them. You're eating. You're just gobbling up these retail traders, one after another with them. But the one thing you're doing, you're like, okay, thank you. And you're backing off. You're taking your profit. Because we all know how fast these algos move. That shit can turn around so fast and eat all your profit away. That's why you just got to take it. Ching, 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 ching. If you're long, you're selling. If you're short, you're buying. It's simple. You're either hitting the red button or the green button. There's only buyers and sellers. Unfortunately, 80% of all that liquidity is these high-frequency trading algorithms. And if you can't recognize what they're doing, um, I'd find something else to do with my time. 100%. I mean, or people just are gambling. If I want to gamble, I'll go to the riverboat. I'll play craps. I'll go to the blackjack. I'll, I'll find a fucking single deck blackjack table. That nobody's sitting at. And I'll play three hands. Right? That's the first place I go. If I go to the casino, <laughs> I go to the high limit tables. I'll let all the, I'll let all the, uh, let's see. You're, you're either, you're, you're either, it, you look at that like a business. Right? Or you're just in there gambling. That You can win money in the casino if you know what you're doing. The problem is, is that the casinos very quickly recognize that you know what you're doing and they will throw in, they will throw in coolers one after another on you. They'll kick you out of the casino and you haven't even done anything wrong because you're winning. <laughs> it's crazy. They don't like people to win. How do you think they got fucking solid gold doors on their casinos and shit? But yeah, if I want to gamble, it's not going to be in the markets, right? It's not going to be in the markets going to be at the damn craps table or something where i'm having fun i'm drinking bourbon and having a great time with my friends but when i'm trading it's all business i'm sitting down this is what i do (laughs) people have a hard time like uh separating those you know enjoying yourself having a good time going out the casino and then you're coming to trade are you going to be a gambler? Are you going to use leverage? Are you going to try to beat the system? It's set up to beat you to death. So good luck. And you're trading on exchanges that see everything you're doing. Everything you're doing. And I got a newsflash. If you're using a lot of leverage, you're on their to-do list. You are on their to-do list. Right? They've got you sized up. They got a diaper. 
right? They're going to throw a diaper on you. You're going to be shitting your pants. They're coming for you. I don't care. I don't care if you got $1,000 in your account or $10,000 in your account or $100,000 in your account. If you're using a ton of leverage, you're a target. You are definitely a target. An easy one. Why? Because they know you're a fucking degen. <laughs> they know that they are that you are going to let them just come in and just take all your money from you. And it just happens over and over and over again. So yeah, that's the Monday morning lesson. No leverage. Take your time. Build your account up slowly. Right? That's what it's all about. People are like, how do I make money if I don't use leverage? You got $1,000 in your account, right? Go, go open up a trade. With that thousand dollars, zero leverage, and take your profit real fast. I'll show you how to make money. All right. Oh, oh I just only made fifty dollars on that. It's just like, oh my goodness, you don't. You, okay, you're gonna get it. What happens if you did that ten or fifteen times today, man? Start adding it up. It adds up quick, and at the same time, your account's getting bigger. Which means more risk on. No leverage. I'm telling you, if you're using an exchange and you're using no leverage, you're not even a fucking blip on the radar, man. They're not even interested in you. They don't care if you're winning trades, losing trades. You're not a blip on their radar. They, they feed off of these leveraged people. And they themselves get over leveraged and get wrecked. In these exchanges, one after another... They're just falling off the cliff, especially in bear markets. You see all these projects and exchanges just fading off into the sunset, right? Broke as shit. It's insane. Leverage will ruin you. There's no, I don't care if you're a big firm or a retail trader. If you're using leverage, you're going to get wrecked, right? It's just happened recently. It's just happened recently. And you just, and then, and you hear us say, and they're supposed to be the ones that know what they're doing. This is, this is where we're at. This is what we're up against. This is why, you know, alpha trading is just creeping along, doing our thing. We don't worry about new members. Would it be great to have uh, 500 people in here? Can you imagine what this discord would be like if we had 500 well-versed traders in here all using the same charts not not some other crypto discord we got two goons fighting over macd and rsi and which one's better go in any other crypto discord it's a shit show nobody's everybody's using different things telling other yours don't work mine works i'm blah 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 can you imagine the power of having all these people working together Sharing knowledge in the Discord, right? Trade setups. It's powerful. One day it'll be like that. But I'm telling you, until enough people just get severely wrecked in these markets, it's it, it's just never going to happen. The draw is too strong. The cult, the cult, the cult is too strong, right? Peep, there's way too many sheep in the world, right? Don't be a sheep. Be a wolf. <laughs> That's been my motto my whole life. I don't care if it's on the golf course, on the battlefield, fucking trading, wherever. <laughs> Be a fucking wolf. If you're a sheep, you're going to get slaughtered. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> Simple. We got a lot of sheep out here. So that's why we put together a group of wolves to attract people. You know, if, if somebody's a real trader and they come into this Discord and they start reading messages and looking at charts, it doesn't take long. If you give yourself a chance, you'll be like, what the hell is going on? Where has this shit been? All right. Just like I said about five years ago now, when I met the guy that created the percentile indicator. And I was like, Im immediately, immediately I saw something. I could see with the volatility expansion. That's the first thing I noticed. I was like, okie dokie. Okay, so volatility expanded that time, but price action went down. How can I figure out what's the key here? Because 
the, the volatility is not a directional indicator, but I can totally see when the volatility starts to expand, the price action is moving in one direction and moving in that direction quickly where there is untold amounts of profit to be taken if you understand that indicator, if you just take the profit. That's what's crazy. And so then I was just dicking around one day, right? And by, 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 by like chance, I had got a chart sent to me that had a correlation coefficient on it, all right? And so I asked this guy about it. Oh, that's nothing. And I'm like, nah, man, it, it's something. I was like, I took, I, I went into the inputs and I changed the source to the percentile of volatility. And I was like, look at this. Look. It, the, the, when that volatility expanded, it was negatively correlated and price action went down. And look at this move. It expanded and went up because it was positively correlated. And he's like, oh, no, uh, that's nothing, blah, blah, blah. And the chart I had seen, he went and removed it off of TradingView because that's where the chart was. It was under his first historical volatility indicator. There was a co co correlation coefficient under it. That's what sparked me. And then he denied it. And now here we are. Everything's correlation. And now we've got this predictor. So yeah, we're moving right along. And it is fantastic. It is fantastic. All about correlation. So that's how this whole thing went down with correlation. Then I got a couple more people looking at it. And then a couple more people. And then before it, we're just, you know, nice, tight group of people going, Hello! This shit's incredible. And it just drives, it drives these guys to build better indicators, right? And, and, and then we're here. This is where we're at. I mean, right now we've literally, if you added all the indicators, there's probably over 40. It's insanity. You don't even need them all. That's why there, there will come a time where we'll have this nice, tight package of indicators. Because that, if somebody comes in, say somebody comes in, they want the ProTrader account. You look on your indicator and you're just like, uh, what in the hell is going on? Because you just get bombarded with this pile, this basket of indicators. And it is overwhelming. I don't even have to ask anybody. It has to be. I'm telling you right now, I open it up and I'm overwhelmed at all the indicators, right? <laughs> There's just a ton of them. So every day, that's, that's our purpose, is to just make this as simple as possible, right? That's the KISS principle. I've always tried to use that, all right? I think I was first introduced to the KISS principle by my high school golf coach. Because you know how golfers are. You're always trying to complicate your swing, right? The, the golf swing's natural if you just let it happen. If you try to complicate it, oh, I'm coming inside out, I'm freaking not bending my elbow, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> You're just going to be a train wreck. Just let it happen. Just like trading. Get your right package of indicators, just let it happen. But yeah, guys, I'm glad everybody showed up this morning. Beautiful. It's going to be an interesting day. See, see what a uh, spy wants to do. See what spy wants to do here. Because until that happens... I mean, you can see, boy, it pumped right back up above this monthly level. And that is the R, is that the R1 on the monthly? I think it is. Yes. So we're up here. That's the R1 of the monthly. So we'll see what happens. But I, I just have this feeling, this weekly range right here. I mean, we're talking top side, yeah, 424 area, bottom side, 420 or 419 area. We're going to get into the meat of this. In my opinion, weekly ranges love to get loves to get into the meat of those volatility ranges. So we'll see what happens. But I could I could see this go sideways. I could. You can see we got a way bigger weekly range this week. So we'll see what's up tomorrow. <clears throat> but yeah, thanks again, guys. We'll see you tomorrow morning, nine a.m.